Now y'all know we could talk about some Baltimore Ravens all day, every day. I mean, we literally do that. Uh, but anyway, I think it's important with anything that you, you're talking about so much and going over so much. I think it's important to sort of take a step back, breathe, and really just reflect on some different aspects of whatever that subject of conversation is. In this case, it's the Baltimore Ravens. And I, I think it's important to look at it maybe from a different point of view or different perspective and in today's video we're going to do just that because we're going to talk to a very very special person somebody who's been involved with the baltimore ravens for a very long time somebody who plays a very big role when it comes to these baltimore ravens and somebody who is just an all-out genuine nice person so team keep it clean i love y'all and i promise you you will love this yeah this feels like a dream Team Keep It Clean, a very, very, very special guest in the building. Uh, you know her, I'm sure, but if you don't, you're about to get to know her. Uh, this is Lacey DaCosta, uh, the wife to Ravens general manager, Eric DaCosta. And you know, but before we get into things, just introduce yourself to everybody. Where can they find you at? Uh, and then we'll get started. Hi, thanks for having me. Um... Well, I'm Lacey DaCosta. I, um, you can find me on Twitter, Man. although you know, I'm not really looking. I, I'm glad, I'm happy to talk to fans on Twitter. So anytime that you want to reach out, I'm there. Um, i am been married to Eric DaCosta for 22 years. We have three kids. Um, I've been a Ravens fan um, since 1996 and met Eric through the Ravens um, when I worked for the team in 1998. Um, so that's it. Oh, that's cool. Well, now, what, what did you do when you worked for the team back in 98? I was a marketing assistant. Um, mm -hmm. I worked directly under David Modell. Um, he hired me right out of college um, mm -hmm. to actually assist his assistant, uh, Teresa Abato, who also oversaw um, premium services, um, So, which was like the suites and uh, the club level. And so I helped her directly but i also did anything that anyone in the marketing needed oh, that's cool I, yeah i didn't know that now um so because there's a lot of people that thought that with eric da costa that's how you became a ravens fan but you've been there since the very beginning no, definitely not i grew up in baltimore <laughs> i grew up in baltimore mm -hmm. my parents were um well my dad was a diehard um sports fan um he loved the colts um so when the Ravens came to Baltimore, he was, you know, so, so over the moon excited. And mm -hmm. his company actually helped build Camden Yards. And so the Maryland oh. already reached out to my dad when the Browns were moving to Baltimore. Um, so he was mm -hmm. one of the first to know, which was pretty cool. Oh, that's nice. That's neat. Yeah. Now, take, take us through, especially this week, because this week training camp is starting. Um, so take us through just a normal day in the DaCosta household for training camp. Well, I have to say, like, I have such an appreciation for all the, um, the moms in the life or any partners in the NFL, um, mm -hmm. raising kids. This is like when your summer comes to a screeching halt, uh, mm -hmm. you get so excited when the draft is over and, uh, mini camps and you have that nice month where you're just with your family and a mm -hmm. lot of you know, a lot of families are getting, you know, it's the summer's over. <laughs> so, um, I usually, um, you know, when the kids were really young this time of year, I would start to, you know, stress out about how am I going to get everyone where they need to be? Because I really can't mm -hmm. depend on Eric at all. Um, so now as my kids have gotten older, I have realized, you know, that, you know, on a daily basis, things are going to work out. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, you have to take a deep breath. It's, you got to, we all sort of like help each other. Um, Eric and I usually have a talk with the kids right before training camp starts. And it's like, you know, all hands on deck. Dad's not going to be around. You all need to pitch in. We need to, 
you know, get whatever needs to get done. We can't bother dad unless it's, you know, an absolute emergency. So um, basically um, any given day we wake up and Eric's gone. Um, mm -hmm. He'll usually give me a hug in the morning and he's off by seven o'clock. Um, and he doesn't come home usually until close to nine. Mm. That is a, uh, whew, that's, that's a schedule right there. It's a long day. Yeah. Super, super long day. Um, but definitely, uh, I'm, I'm sure, uh, cause like I was telling you offline, um, like my job is not on the same level of busyness as Eric DeCostas is, but, uh, I, I appreciate the support that my wife gives me. Um, cause it, it makes the world of a difference because, had he not had your support, then that could make stressful things even more stressful. Um, right. But the fact that you support him, that that definitely uh, goes a, a super, super long way. Well, now, I'm, um, oh, go ahead. I'm really lucky, though, because my family's close by and mm. um, a lot of families don't have that. And mm. that was one re thing that kept um, us in Baltimore was because we had such a great support system. Um, and the team does such a great job with the families. So, I mean, we can come out to training camp anytime we want. Um, so we get to see, you know, our husbands or our wives or whoever we're there to support. And it, um, the, I think I know that the players really appreciate that, too. Yeah. And I know um, I, th there was a, a grading system that came out early this offseason. And mm -hmm. it said that with uh, the Baltimore Ravens, they were one of the top teams when it comes to uh, the families and, and the, the, the family involvement and everything and how the, the families are treated. Uh, from the organization so that's always something good to hear and I, and I um that's really not a surprise uh because viewing it from a fan's point of view uh the Baltimore Ravens they have such I always tell people they have such a great fan experience um right. when you come out to the stadium uh going to the, the the training camps um how they always especially how they do so much for the kids too the kids have a, a great experience and that's whether they know about football or not but especially if they appreciate football they appreciate it even more but even still, like I, I know my son, he he knows who Lamar Jackson is. He, he loves Lamar Jackson. Um, but football in itself, he's like whatever about it. But still, he has a good time uh, like at training camps, how they, they can have all the kids line up and meet some different players and whatnot. Uh, I know they have the um, the kids that are in those football leagues where they can go into the uh, facility and meet some of the players up there and whatnot. It's just um, it's, it's, it's a super, super nice experience. Um, mm -hmm. that that yeah. actually started back with the models and when they came in 1996 they that was one thing that david preached to us was that we have to set the standard um for fan experience and it's just it's mm -hmm. gotten it's gotten even more amazing over the years with the bashadis and so the i mean the fans in baltimore are so blessed yeah they they, they really are now with that being said the fan experience is it's a wild one uh, there can be a lot of highs. There can be a lot of lows. Uh, and fans, fans, fan is short for fanatics uh, mm -hmm. because fans can get crazy. They can get crazy in a great way. They can get crazy yeah. in a not so great way. Now, um, on here, my motto is team keep it clean. Uh, and what that is, is a, a family friendly atmosphere. Um, when we talk about football, we talk about Ravens like, 28 7 um and when we talk about nfl in general but with whatever we're talking about uh, a big thing with me we, we talk about this and talk about that we'll criticize stuff but mm -hmm. it's important to do it with respect uh right. because everybody who we're talking about is is sons is fathers is uncles is brothers is everything it, these are human beings at both at the beginning and the end of the day uh so speaking with respect is a big thing but not everybody does that. Right. Um, you have been somebody that uh, I follow for the past couple of years and I have continued to see uh, just a lot of positivity uh, from you, like almost nonstop positivity from you uh, amidst, amidst a lot of, there can be a lot of negativity, uh, right. whether it's towards you directly, whether it's towards Eric. Now, how do you, and I know, it, I'm sure it can be really hard, um, but how can you continue to maintain that positivity uh, despite when there's negativity, whether it's toward you directly or because I know some people feel like and I know you've expressed it plenty of times like, hey, 
I'm not the messenger. I'm not right. going to go tell Eric this and that and the third and whatnot. Uh, but how do you continue to remain positive through all of that? Well, um, my the way I use social media, I feel like um, it's it's a way to basically bring positivity to anyone for any reason, not just for fans or not just for, you know, under the Ravens umbrella. Um, I think it's important to, cause social media is not going away. No. Um, I think it's important to show this, these next generation of kids coming up that, you know, you cannot use this as a source to just attack people because whatever you send out there is going to be, it's out there forever. Yep. Um, so it's, you know, people need reinforcement every day. Um, positivity every day because life is hard. Mm -hmm. It's hard. And social media has made it so much more intense. Um, people want to get their news that way. They, they, you know, Eric always says to me, I, he, at times he's like, how do you even put yourself through this all the time? I said, well, mm -hmm. listen, I, I just like all the fans, I want to see what the breaking news is when it comes out and, mm -hmm. and, you know, um, and yes, of course, I see a lot of negativity, but I also know how hard the team is working behind closed doors. That and mm -hmm. when I see things that you know the fans are getting upset about, I know how hard um, the front office is working and the coaches are working, and and no one cares more about that team than anyone in that building. And so um, they will they will do whatever they can and leave no stone unturned to get it fixed and right. So I try to just keep a positive attitude because I know there'll be something com that'll come down the line. That's going to make everybody happy anyway, you know, because no one wants to win more than Eric. I know that there are times that I just have to shut it down. Oh yeah. 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 I, I completely get that because, um, social media is like, it's, it's a gift and a curse uh, it because it gives you instant access to people across the world. Uh, but at the same time, it's a curse because it gives you instant access to people across the world. Um, so there are people that get on there and, hey, there, there'll be great conversations. There'll be great people uplifting you and whatnot, showing support. But then on the flip side, you know how the flip side can go. Um, but right. I, I, I do appreciate that uh, about you, about your posts and your tweets and whatnot. Um, when the fact that they're just always so uh, so positive um, because I always tell people like, hey, the as far as like news and stuff, when we watch the news, it just push out so much negative stuff. And, and a lot of times negative stories get more publicity than positive ones. Right. Uh, and and it's, there's enough negativity in the world already. Uh, so why, why continue to add to it? Ain't no point. Right. So um, well, as as uh, you've been with the Ravens and around the Ravens and whatnot, you develop relationships. How, how was it when you first met uh, John Hubbard? Oh, um, when I first met John, I actually reached out to his wife first, Ingrid, um, when they were hired, when they were hired or she, well, John was hired. Um, and just, you know, being from Baltimore, I wanted to be sort of like a sounding board for her or like someone that she could reach out to mm -hmm. with questions about, you know, where to go to the grocery store or <laughs> what, you know, which schools should she be looking for for her daughter or churches to go belong to and different things like that. But, um, I mean, John, he is what he is. It, it, I mean, it's, he's been the same from the time that he started at the Ravens as a breath of fresh air. He's a wonderful person. He's a great friend to Eric. Um, you know, he's just, he's a special person and he's a great coach and, um, he's an awesome, awesome neighbor too. <laughs> <laughs> And, you know, I, I got the same question about um, Lamar Jackson. How was it when you first met him and uh, just seeing his growth uh, really over the years? Um, the first time I met Lamar, let's see, I went to his press conference and he was, um, I mean, he he's the type of player, he's um, not many like that you, he literally like, radiates energy like special energy where i mean he walks into any room or he's around anybody I mean, the fans feel it i know yeah. um 
and that that's never gone away. Um, I think he's grown um, in maturity, being or as taking you know every year he's taking that that step as he should um, to become the leader, and he's just he's such a great role model for this city. Um, we're so blessed to have him here, and every. I see every day when we're around him, just the the pure energy and love he exudes for the for the game, for the mm -hmm. for the team, for um, the city, and so proud of that. We should all be proud of that. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. I know. Um, one thing I met Lamar a couple of times, and every time I met him, he's been the exact same way. Um, just super, super positive, super approachable, very, yeah. very, very approachable. Um, always willing to take pictures with people, say what's up, and, and not just because there, there could be some people, especially with like a celebrity status and whatnot, where they'd be like, "All right, let's let's get a picture real quick, and then you got to get out of my face." Um, yeah. But with Lamar, he'll take a picture with you, and that's cool. But he'll also have a conversation with you. He'll talk to you. He'll treat you like you're a human being instead of just, "Oh, this a fan, real quick. They they want to take a picture. All right, take a picture and move." He he has never been like that. So um, that's something that I always appreciated about him. No. He's not like that at all. I don't. Mm -hmm. There's. We don't have any players. I don't think that are like that. And I love going to training camp and seeing how our players interact with. Um, yeah. With, they really, they appreciate it. They, they love. Um, you, you can see it. You know how they interact with everybody, and you know those mm -hmm. days are long and they're hard, and mm -hmm. and they just you know having the fans out there, I'm sure gives them energy to get through. Now, with with that being said. Um, because you, you develop a lot of relationships with different people in the front office, with different staff members, uh, with mm -hmm. different players. Um, and there are some people who are around for a short period of time. There's some people who are around for longer periods of time. But how, how do you deal with when you develop a relationship with somebody and whether the player retires or they're released or they're traded uh, and their family, uh, they end up having to move somewhere else? That's hard. Um, that was one thing that, you know, when I first started working for the team, um, Mrs. Modell would tell me, she's like, you know, try not to get too attached because mm. this is a transient business. And so, um, but at the same time, we are a family. So usually when someone moves on, it's first, you know, it's a great opportunity. So um, we lost, there are a lot of people in the front office, um, when Eric was a scout and a assistant GM that would get greater good opportunities. And so, yeah, I miss those families like Joe Douglas's family, oh, um, a lot of the scouts like they, but they all had these great opportunities. So we all kind of like cheer for each other in our, you know, our own way. Um, and all support each other. Cause we all know what we're going each, each family is going through. And um, of course, you know, when we play the jets, I don't want them, I don't want them to win, <laughs> but I do hope that, you know, that they, they succeed for that, you know, the, that family's sake because they're our friends. Right. Um, right. Yeah. That's, that, that's tough right there. That's a tough, uh, tough spot to be in when you, when you know somebody yep. personally and yeah, yeah, you want to root for yep. their success, but yep. not too much, but I, I, I get it though. Yeah. Cause that's, that's the respect. Yep. Um, now one thing, uh, on a more brighter note, when it comes to transitions, uh, cause there will be some players, some Baltimore Ravens players that mm -hmm. whether they release and they go to a different team or they end up retiring and whatnot, there will be, and I'm not sure how many other organizations, I'm not sure some other organizations do it, but I'm not sure to what extent, but one thing that I've noticed with the Baltimore Ravens, especially, uh, over these past couple of years, and, and I really appreciate is when there will be a former player that will retire uh, and then they'll come back and end up working in the front office. Like more recently, there's been Anthony Weaver, or not even the front office, but they'll be on the staff. Um, there's Anthony Weaver. There's Anthony Le Levine. There's been yep. Jamil McClain. There's been um, uh, Zach Orr. Um, so it's been a, a, a lot of different people. Uh, how do you feel about like that transition and just to watch players that you've watched play on the field and then they they, they move their way uh, into – becoming a member of the staff. Oh, you did, and Tony Jefferson this year too. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's great. I mean, it's awesome. And the the amount of players that want to come back, it just shows you just how well they they've they loved being with the team. So, um I think those opportunities are amazing. Um 
And I love seeing them come back, you know, especially like with Tony coming back, I was, couldn't be more happy for him. Um, yeah. So yeah, I think it's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. And it's, it's always nice because it provides uh, more jobs for them, more opportunities um, I because I mean, you see like nowadays more than ever, um, you see players just, they end up turning into coaches. You got guys like Mike Rabel, um, right. who's the coach of the, the Titans. You have um, D'Amico Ryans, who is a player. Now he's a head coach of the Texans, I believe. Um, so it's, it's opportunities out there. And that's um, one thing about that I, I've watched with the Baltimore Ravens. If you don't burn your bridges, um, because I've seen some players, they burn their bridges with the Ravens. But if you don't burn your bridges, uh, even if you get released or traded or whatnot, you leave on good terms. Um, they'll they'll look out for you. They'll they'll definitely yeah. look out for you uh, in a big way. So, Lacey, I, I appreciate you coming on um, <laughs> very 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 much. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, what what are some of the things that you before we get out of here? What's some of the things that you look forward to during the season? Because uh, I'm sure it's very very hectic. But what do, what do you look forward to during the season? What are some of your favorite moments during a, a Ravens football season? Um, the games, really just the atmosphere of our home games. Um, I I love the energy, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, just that whole day is just like, we're so lucky to have this team in Baltimore and it brings so much joy, even if, you know, there's some hardships with some of the games, but it's just, mm -hmm. we're so lucky. And um, I don't remember what it was like for those 13 years, um, I was so young. But just to see the fan base and feel that energy on Sundays is is really my favorite favorite part. Oh yeah, and that's that's a whole lot of energy too. I hate the away games, but <laughs> <laughs> like away, I don't like going to away games. People always ask me if I go to away games. No, I don't go to away games. Oh really? I go, okay. Going this, I usually go to maybe one. I can't. You know, it's it's difficult um, because I don't get to spend a whole lot of time with Eric. I certainly can't watch the games with him. So it's difficult yeah. to be in, in an environment like that. Um, so but I do. I look forward to those home games and um, seeing the energy of the fans. OK, that's cool. Man. But Lazy, I, I thank you again. Thank you for taking the time out uh, to speak with us today. Thank you for coming on here with us and, and just really um sharing what your experience is uh when it comes to the baltimore ravens because uh you're in a very special special spot um thank so we appreciate oh yeah for sure for sure we thank you um so enjoy this season uh are we, I, I you, hope huh are we you up here at all most likely most likely hopefully um but at toward the end of training camp and then maybe after that uh because again it, it, you know, it was a, it was nice meeting you at last year's training camp yeah. at you and uh and, and jane too so that was cool um, so I, I, I really appreciate your time though, Lacey. Thank you very, very much. And, um, anybody who follows Lacey on Twitter, if you don't, you can, uh, just, if you want even more positivity in your life, which you can never have enough of, then yeah, you can follow on Twitter for sure. Uh, but I appreciate you. Thank you for everybody that's watching team. Keep it clean. I love y'all. Appreciate y'all. And we out. Ain't no chance what I mean. You too, team. Keep it clean. You see my boy. He like got a man. Shout out to Graven.